Wow. <clears throat> Just a sweet spearhead here. Yesterday I was, I took a screenshot of my phone and uh, I was really, there you go, I was really shocked with these temperatures here. 101, 102, 101, 100 degrees. I'm like, wow! You know, I'm from Miami, Florida, and I mean, it didn't really get that hot. It was hot, but not that hot. It's been really hot lately. Not just in America, but all over the world. You have people in countries that, because of the heat, they're just falling down and, and just passing away. You have farmers that's having trouble watering their, 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 their crop. And the response of this our administration, President Biden, I heard that they almost declared a climate change <coughs> emergency. Everybody say emergency. emergency. If you was with us about four weeks ago, Second Timothy, Second Peter, I believe, the second chapter, it talks about how because of God's word, he created everything. You know, everything we see was created by God's word. Because of God's word, he created everything. God's word also, he caused Noah's flood to come on the earth, right? And then in the same little passage, it says, and with God's word, he's going to preserve the earth until he gets ready to judge it. So what does that tell us? Is man strong enough to create the world and the universe and everything we see? No. Is man strong enough to stop God's word to not bring a flood no. on the earth? Is man strong enough to prevent God from being able to preserve the earth until he gets ready? So that means global warming is not real. It's not. And you know what? And I, I felt as I was preparing and praying that we really need to keep our eyes open and our ears open with that because I just feel something sinister happening. I was just reading a, a, a little Epic Times article that came up. It says that there is a new order that was brought out that Americans could be Americans could be tracked because of the emissions. The carbon dioxide emissions that are involved. They're going to be tracking Americans. By finger. Say again? By finger. Yeah, so there's some weird stuff going on, all based on a false doctrine. <coughs> but the reason why I brought that up is because, you know, other presidents, when there was emergencies, they called for, and I'm, this is not bashing, we need to pray for, we need to honor our president. But... Oftentimes, presidents, they ask the nation to pray. Right. They call for an emergency. Let's pray. They do. Right? Yes. And now we're relying on false doctrines, false teachings. Right? And so the reason why I brought that up, instead of calling an emergency for climate change, yeah, the climate, the, the temperature does change. <laughs> right? Instead of calling an emergency for that, we need to call an emergency for the alarming rate that Americans are walking away from God's word. At an alarming rate, our country is walking away from God's principles. And as I was studying, I, I, it, just, it just really connected that there's a nation, the nation of Israel, who had did the same thing. And there was a consequence for it. Let's read it. It's in Amos. <coughs> Amos chapter 8. This fascinates me. Amos 8, verses 11 through 14, it says, The, day, the days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord. We've been talking about famine. When I will send a famine through
through the land. Not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Let me read that again. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In that day, the lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of thirst. They who swear by the shame of Samaria or say, uh, as surely as your God lives, so they're, they're reaching for something else other than the true God, O Dan, or as surely as the God of Beersheba lives, they will fall never to rise again. It's amazing what we will eat when we don't have much. I, I remember being in, 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 when I was in the army, when we were out in the woods, and you know, you don't have the luxury of going to Burger King. You don't have the luxury of going to McDonald's. We had our, what do we have? We had our MREs. You know what that is? You know what that stands for? Gross. <laughs> you know, they put stuff in those MREs that would lock your system up because they didn't want soldiers having issues having to go to the bathroom. So they, they put stuff in there to lock you up. But one time I was hungry, and sometimes it's like, okay, you got this MRE. If you lose it or if you eat it early, that's your problem. That's all you get. And so one time, one, one of my favorite things, and it was kind of a hit. Um, it was the the ham slice meal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you like the the ham slice? They had the cheese, and then you had they had Louisiana sauce in the in the packet too. I mean, it was, I mean, it was legit. I was like, wow, Louisiana. But one day, you know, I'm I'm standing by the hump B, and I drop my ham slice, and it was muddy. I mean. You know, sometimes we'd be in the woods and, and and the mud's like that deep in certain places and you're walking in it, you know, and my ham slice fell in the mud. I was like, man, but you know, I was like, I ain't going to deny this ham slice. I'm going to eat it because I don't have nothing else. And I was thankful. You know, just get that canteen, put a little water on it and rinse, rinse it off. And I was good to go. Oh, man. But I was thankful. Like I said, it's amazing what people will do to find spiritual food when they don't have the right food. A while back, I was preparing to, to teach a spiritual warfare class. And there was this couple, seasoned believers in the Lord, and they were going to help teach and help in the spiritual warfare class. And the husband said something that was very interesting. He said, because we were talking about the nation and what was going on in our world, and he said, you know what? Oftentimes, because people aren't being discipled, we're talking about discipleship, because people aren't being discipled, because they're not getting the truth, they're dumpster diving for truth in other places. When we're really hungry, we'll go to great efforts to get something to eat. And what's happening in our in our world now, just like in that scripture, there was a famine because they walked away from the Lord. That they're going and finding garbage to eat spiritually. Garbage. And you know where a lot of a lot of the garbage that we're finding is on the internet. Garbage. People are they're searching for God. They're searching for truth. And to find that truth, they're eating garbage. But God wants us to help turn that around. Can I get an amen? amen. He wants them to eat the truth. So we're in a series. Um, <laughs> ten essential things we need to do to be God's disciples. God's disciple. <coughs> Ten essential things. The first week, what did we talk about? Y'all remember? 
Worship, loving God. Good job. Second week, what did we talk about? Prayer. Third week, we're going to talk about the importance to continue in God's word. The importance to continue in God's word. Here's our scripture. Here's our main scripture today. John 8, 31 to 32. John 8, 31 to 32. It says, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So what we're going to talk about today is three things that will happen if we continue, everybody say continue. continue. If we continue in God's word. Check this out. I didn't. I never saw this before. But let's read it again. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him. So they were already believers. Who had believed in him if you abide. Everybody say abide. abide. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. I love the Greek, one of the Greek definitions for abide there is to continue to be present. Do you know that we can be, I can be walking in Walmart, or I can be at a party or at, a, at something and not really be there? You know, I could be zoned out. <laughs> abide. So we went on vacation to Myrtle Beach. And uh, we had a great time. Did you have a great time? Oh, you had a good time. And I have to make a confession. This was the first time out of 45 years living on this earth that I got a sunburn. <laughs> I got a sunburn. All the time being in the sun. Oh, yeah. I got a sunburn. I mean, it hit me right here, and it it was stinging and hurting for about three days. I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> You're reflecting off the water. I mean, I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, but I, I got burnt. But I think part of the reason I got burnt is because we was so enjoying that water. I mean, we would stay in there three hours at a time. I learned how to boogie board. Y'all know how to boogie board? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that was wonderful. That's when you had a little board and you got on your stomach and you try to time the waves so the waves could push you. I time everything. Let's put it on. Uh, Levi did teach me. He was like, you got to wait right there, Dad. And then I, he taught me how to boogie board. <laughs> Man, I had, we had so much fun. But I think that's a good picture of our importance to stay and have fun and abide in God's word, to continue. When I was in basic training, by the time we finished that, I was in really good shape. We were running fast, long, and we were getting after it. I remember our drill, drill sergeant said that, hey guys, you guys are in really good shape right now, but you need to keep working on this so you don't lose it. You need to continue. There's this general, I think Eisenhower, he said, he said, it's easier to maintain what you got than to lose it and try to regain it. So we need to continue in God's in God's word. So from that scripture, the first thing we'll do that happens when we Continue in God's word is that we will truly be God's disciple. Everybody say, truly be, truly be God's, disciple. God's disciple. So I have a question. <clears throat> Even as believers, are we disciples of the Lord or are we disciples of the world? Because you know what? I'm learning that there's a lot of things that's disciplining Christians. Did you know that? That we are being disciplined a lot of times by the world? Yes. You know what I think once one form of Christians being disciplined by the world is? It may seem crazy. 
but political correctness. Yeah, that's what's doing. You know, I started, you know, I said, yeah, you got politically correct, politically correct. I started wondering and thinking and noticing, man, the stuff that's politically correct isn't necessarily biblically correct. Right. And in a like a little soft, undercut way, the church has been <laughs> taught to be quiet, sit in your corner. You know, if you want to have church, pray in your bathroom, but don't bring it out here. We've been trained, haven't we? I was listening to uh, uh, Answers in Genesis. They have a channel, and they have uh, Answers News. And one of the things one of the guys said in there, he says that screams disciple. Screams Disciple, you know, even from watching TV, and there's been studies. Teresa probably knows, there's been studies that the things that we watch subconsciously influences us. We don't even realize it, but subconsciously, it's teaching us stuff and it's training us to do something. Noise of the world, huh? The noise of the world. The noise of the world can have the ability to train us. But what's the antidote for that? We need to continue. Say again. Yeah, we need to continue in it. Not just stop. So this is something that I, when I was studying, I, I thought this was very interesting. That, you know, everything we we see right now was put in this world by God's word, right? Now you see this gate here. The raw material for it was put here. By God, and so mankind came, and, but everything we see started by God's word. Do you know salvation started by God's word? We believed in God's word; it became new creations. But although we were things started with God's word, even our salvation, God doesn't want us to stop there. He wants us to continue. So, anybody seen Star Wars? Yes, I'm like Black a, Star Wars. So, yes, I'm a huge Star Wars. What do you What do you call the the? Is it Padawan? The, the what? Padawan. Padawan is the learner. I was doing some some research on the Greek word for disciple, and that's really one of the best descriptions you can have. It's it's an instructor that has his student to teach him how to fight. In Star Wars case. Um, um, so, so, what was Anakin's mentor? What was his name? Obi Wan Kenobi. No, right? <laughs> Obi Wan. Okay, Obi Wan Kenobi. He was kind of like the trainer, the teacher. I don't want to call Jesus our 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 Jedi instructor, but that's a good picture. But here's the thing: you can't continue to be a disciple if you stop being trained. By your trainer. Like if I was to go take Taekwondo, <coughs> I always I always wonder, am I saying it right? Because I watched this, this show. Yeah. I, I watched the show while back, um, Napoleon Dynamite. I'm sorry. Yes. But it's <laughs> <laughs> Rex Kwondo. I'm like, Rex Kwondo. <laughs> That's not a real thing. Anyway, so I'm like, did I say Rex? Okay. Taekwondo. Yes. But if you stop going to those training sessions, guess what? You won't continue to be trained. You, you know what I'm saying? God said, if you continue in my word, it says you truly will be my disciple. Yeah. What happened to Anakin? Yes, sweetie. Were you trying to get at how he wasn't Truly being trained by Obi Wan because he learns himself, but yeah, I'll, I'll, he found it. Yeah, so so what happened with Anakin? Because you know Anakin, <laughs> and I'm not trying to go full Star Wars on this one. No, <laughs> but 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 this is I believe this applies. Anakin started out good, but he didn't continue, and he became Darth Vader. Yeah. Right. He didn't continue with the teachings of Obi Wan. 
And sometimes we don't continue with Jesus' teachings. We find other yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Say that one more time. Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. And one of the main things, one of the main things that caused one of the main things that caused Anakin to lose his way was fear. Fear. I believe fear is our our greatest enemy. And we're mentioning last week how, how fear has a voice. You know fear has a voice? It does. So after Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, they hid from God. And, and God's like, where are you? There's power in questions. Where are you? And so, well, we heard you, you know, walking in the garden and we got afraid because we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Fear did. Fear did. That's one of our greatest enemies. Yes, you're ready to go. Okay, I just want to be sure I'm on the right side. I don't know. So the second thing that that continuing in God's word does, it will help us help set us free. Everybody say set us free. Set us free. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. We will know God's truth. Everybody say know God's truth. How many um so the first thing we have, what was the first thing that happens when we remain in God's word? We're truly be his disciples, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing is we will know his truth. And I love it. And that is to experientially know something. So it's not just know about it. So how many in here has ever had sweet potato pie? You know, is that good stuff or what? Yeah. I mean, c come on now. I because I've heard a lot of people didn't know about sweet potato pie. It's more like pumpkin pie. But I don't know if you've really had sweet potato pie unless you had my mom's sweet potato pie. Right. You, know what I'm you ain't really had it until you had her. That's what everybody say about their mom. <laughs> <laughs> But when we continue in God's word, when we continue in it, we just don't know about it. We know it because we experienced it. Right. We experienced it. And you know what else? Knowing God's truth is really knowing Jesus. When we continue in God's word, you know what? You really learn something about people when you listen to what they say. Sometimes you just be quiet and listen. <coughs> you learn a whole bunch. Won't you? As we continue to listen to Jesus' word, we're going to get to know him better and better. And so in our discipleship night, and I, um, last week, was it last week or two weeks ago? Um, uh, Miss Carolyn, I, I think I like this, this, this new word. Equip night. Whew. Because I think sometimes with discipleship <coughs> night, it just seems so daunting. Man, am I going to have to memorize 55 scriptures? And, you know, am I have to do this and all, you know, it feels intimidating. But I think equip night or equipping night. Go ahead. Um, in French, there are two different words for to know. One, it's like you could say, just say, which means I know a principle or something I've taught in a book, and je connais, which means I know it experientially. So it's two different words for that. So that's uh, kind of like what you're saying. So yes. you don't want the discipleship night to sound like I know the principles. You want it to be I, I know how to apply them. Yes. But friendship. We dive into questions about the Bible. We pray for each other. It's amazing. Equip night. Um, One thing I was going to talk about fear, I got sidetracked. <coughs> I was going to talk about fear. Um, Carolyn, last week, I thought some, it was very interesting. Um, she's like, yeah, fear does have a voice. But it also has a color, she said. And it has a smell. Like, I know. 
And with with Egypt, when they went through, when they were getting part of the plague, it was so dark, so dark that they felt it. They felt it. Fear has a color. But anyway, we're going back to we will know God's truth. And right now, it's more important than ever that we know God's truth. Can I get an amen? amen? I was talking to Allison the other day, and she said, the thing that we wrestle with is, and, and that gets people is not, you know, some outlandish lie or deception. It's things that's almost true. Almost true. So Satan, what he does, he deceives us not by contrast, right. night and day, apples and oranges, not by that, but by similarities. So we need to know experientially God's truth. And so um, we see, we went to go see Top Gun the other day. Have y'all seen Top Gun the last? No. Long time. So they got the original. They got a new one that came out, right? They had a new one that came out. So Tom Tom Cruise came in there, and he was going to be training some some pilots. And uh, he said, "You know, your this is your manual for how to be a fighter pilot. You know this." You're like, "Yeah, we know this." He threw it in the trash. I'm like, and they're like, "What?" <coughs> you know what he said? Your enemy knows this book too. He said, but you don't know your limits. You don't know your limits. So I, you know what? God wants us to know all the things that he's given us. The devil knows the Bible, doesn't he? But when we get in God's truth, we will figure out things to help us be effective. Yes, Holy Spirit. And so they worked together. So in the Old Testament, they had the manna that was given to them every morning, correct? Every morning. But the dew was on the manna. The dew, that moisture represents the Holy Spirit. <coughs> so you need the word. But if you don't have the manna there, the Holy Spirit doesn't have anything to work with. Oftentimes, we, we need God's word so the Holy Spirit can activate what we're learning and what we know. The next thing, the next thing we need when we continue in God's word is that we will be set free. Everybody say set free. free. We'll be set free. I was I was learning about this this story about um, Craig <coughs> Craig Michelle. He's a pastor. Um, I think it's Life Life Church. Um, and he, they they played a game as a staff. And one morning he came in. And uh, one of the staff members beat him there, and I think he caught him in the closet, and then he shut the door on him and put a, and, and he was like, hey, I'm going to uh, put a chair up under here, and you're not going to be able to get out. But really, he just had his foot, but he wasn't able to get a chair. So I got a chair there, and you're not going to be able to get out. And so... His friend was begging and plead, pleading with him. Hey, please, let, I don't want to be here all day. Could you please let me out? Could you please let me out? But all he had to do is walk up to the door and open it. And he would have been set free. Oftentimes, we can be free, but we don't know it. All we have to do is go open the door that God's already opened but he put up a good front. Hey, you can't get out. I got this chair. You will never get out. And you know what? The devil tells us that sometimes. You will never get out of this situation. You don't have what it takes. The devil is a lie. If we continue in God's word, he will set us. And knowing experientially God's truth, we will be set free. Can I get an amen in this church? We will be set free. And sometimes what we need to be set free is from, I like to call it the fog of life. Did I say fog? Oh. I, was, I was reading about this story. 
um, I was reading about this story of this person. It was so foggy. Have you ever been driven when it was super duper foggy? You're like, oh my goodness, can this stop? And this, this person, he was driving home, and it was super foggy, and they're trying to uh, get, he was trying to get home. He goes, and then he winds up in his driveway that he thought it was, was his, and he wound up at another person's house. The fog was so thick. But you know what I believe the fog of, sometimes the fog of life for us is? Fear. Yes. Obligation. And guilt. Fear, obligation, and guilt. And sometimes it's such a fog that we can't even see straight. But you know what? Continuing in God's word will help us to be able to cut through the fog. Everybody say cut through. Cut through. So in, in the Bible it talks about study to show yourself approved rightly. Divide. That word divide means to cut. To cut. It's kind of like, here's a good word picture of it. Like, you're in this jungle and you need to clear out a path. You use machine, machete, or whatever to clear a path that wasn't there before. By continuing God's word, he will help us to cut through the noise in the fog of this world. Amen. Amen. So, I believe when we continue in God's word, it helps to give us clarity. And it helps us to have 2020 spiritual vision. Do you know there's such a thing as 2020 spiritual vision? <coughs> so, I'm going to pick on Christina just for a little bit. I don't do this. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so, I have noticed sometimes, you know, Christine was like, we were watching TV, she's like, can you read that? I'm like, yeah, sweetie, I can read, you know, that's what it says. And one day we were, I was talking to Tom about this, uh, what day was that, Friday? And so one, one time we went to the movies and she was like, man, why is it so blurry? I'm like, it, it should be clearer than this. And then she grabbed her glasses. She was like, oh. It's clear. It's like 3D. <laughs> See, that's what happens to us, though, spiritually. That sometimes we need to put on the glasses of God's word to help us see clearly. And this is all connected to continuing. There's a scripture in 2 Peter that I want to read to us. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 9. This is the importance of continuing to grow. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 9. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. Knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Wow, corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. So check this out. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, it's talking about keeping going, keeping growing, they will keep you from being ineffective, and unproductive in your knowledge, that word knowledge there is epinosis. Epinosis. So it's the kind of knowledge, it's the intimate knowledge that you have in a relationship of our Lord Jesus Christ. But check this out. But if anyone does not have them, he is what? When we stop growing, guess what happens? We lose our spiritual vision. He is nearsighted and what? Blind. Blind. And has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. So I felt like God wanted to just show some practical things. Um, I kind of zoomed through some of that sermon, but I wanted to get to some of this. Um, 
tips to help us stay in God's word. Everybody say tips to help us stay in God's word. So I just I just prayed and thought about things that helped me. And so these are some things that I believe is going to be helpful for you. You probably already know some of this. It may be a reminder. You may have not seen it. So let's go to the first one. That one right there? Okay. Ask God to help you. So we need to pray. Whenever we're getting ready to study God's word, we need to pray and ask God to help us. Can I get an amen? Is that helpful? Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. Start with a good question. Everybody say, good question. Good All right. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> you ever notice that the question mark is, is formed like a hook? One of, the, one of the main things that we do in our equip night is we dive into questions. You know what questions help? They help draw out God's revelation. I don't think it's a mistake that the question marks like that because question marks help you to dig deeper. I heard a quote that says, there's no learning unless there's a question. If we stop having questions, guess what? We yeah, stop no answers. Exactly. We stop learning. So we'll start with a good question. So this is an example of our lesson that we're going through. Huh? The question mark has a hook on the upper side. We need to keep grabbing what God has for us. Yes. I love that. Yes. That's good. This is just one example of one of the questions. As you obey the voice of the Lord in your season of increase, you will live in your days. When Solomon became, became king of all Israel, the Lord came to him in a dream and promised, If you, if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as the father David did, well, then I will lift in my days. Solomon was at the beginning of his reign, a critical time when his life had moved to a new dimension. And as Solomon obeyed the Lord, he was multiplied. But when he disobeyed and worshipped other gods, his son paid the price. Ten kingdoms were taken out of his hand. What are some things we can do to help us stay humble when things are going well? That's an example of a question. Some of the questions that we have in the clip night. Let's go to the next one. Biblical Bible dictionaries. Go to the next slide. Here's a, a picture of one dictionary that I have. Go to the next slide. Bible dictionaries can give you some Bible references that you can use to help you really Dig in when you're studying. Go to the next slide. Concordances. What's the next slide? This is actually a picture of my father-in-law. Concordance. Everybody know what a concordance is? Mm -hmm. So the concordance, what it does, it, it helps you locate the, the, the Greek and Hebrew meanings of the words that you read. All right, so, so, so for example, here... This was a word for loving, love, right? And then it's telling you from this verse, Genesis 29, 32, that it's, a, it's 157. So once you find the verse that you're looking for, the word that you're looking for, go to this, 157, 157, what it says to have affection for, all right, love. So that's just an example of how concordances work. Let's go to the next slide. Bible Atlas. Those things are helpful. It helps you give a, a, a bigger picture, a greater context. Go to the next slide. Yep. That's a <coughs> picture from, from our lesson that we're going through now in Equip Night. Well, I just changed the name already, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> All right. That's just one of the diagrams. Pretty cool. Give you some background history. Go to the next slide. And here's another one that I found. All right, go to the next one. Commentaries. So this is what you need to understand when you're reading commentaries, that they're not that's not the inspired word of God. Right? It's other people's commenting on God's word. You know the best commentary of the Bible is other scripture. Other scripture will tell you what you need to know if you have questions. All right, commentaries. So this is right here. Um, I think this is from Micah. So it just breaks down each, like each verse, and it's giving you from Micah 7, 1 through 6, it's giving you just extra stuff in there. Next slide. 
Word study books. Man, you can find some really rich things from word study books. Next slide. Here's one that I use sometimes. Go to the next slide. It gives you all this rich information about this word. Love, agape. It means love. Yes. Love is the is the greatest of all the virtues. That's right. Next slide. Inductive Bible study. We're gonna do oh wow. We're gonna do we're gonna try to do some inductive Bible study right now. Y'all ready? You got your thinking cap on? All right. Go to the next slide. All right. We'll we'll just do one. Let's read this. I'm going to show you how to do inductive. So inductive means we allow the word to speak to us instead of us speak stuff into it. That's what inductive means. Let's read it. John 3.16. For, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everything. Yes, for God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Yes. Okay, so I have a question. What's the main subject of this passage? God. Say it again. Jesus. God. Jesus. I believe it's God's love. Yeah. God's love. For God so loved the world. And even if so, like if you said Jesus, Jesus is, is an important thing, but I believe it's God's love. So from God's love, say you picked God's love was the main thing, the main subject of this passage. What does this scripture, what does this passage teach us about God's love? What does it teach us? What he did about it. What he did about it. What else? What he didn't do. What he didn't do. What else? It's for everyone. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. Huh? That he loves us. That he loves us. What, what else did we learn from this passage about God's love? He gave us Jesus. Huh? That he gave us Jesus. That he gave us Jesus. What else? He didn't want to fail us even though he could have. Right. Another thing we can learn is that God's love is giving. You know that? We can give without loving, but we can't love without giving. We can give without without loving, but if we truly love, we're going to give. God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. Gave. So even from that, you got a main subject, then you ask yourself, what can I learn about that main subject by what's already in there? And you allow it to speak to you. Next slide. Next slide. Same Bibles. Next one. Yep. Yep. It's just an example of same Bible. Let's keep going. Yep, keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yep. See right here, it has it had commentary down there. Daily devotion. How many ever you use daily devotions? All right. Keep going. Let's do this. Is just an example of one. <laughs> has material in here. All right. It has questions there for you. Next one. Kids Bible. Do you know that I heard the testimony of this really articulate lady knew the scripture and that when she knew she needed to start learning the Bible that she said she grabbed the kids Bible <coughs> and she began to learn Bible history from kids Bible. Yeah. Sometimes if you want to start learning your Bible, it's nothing wrong with getting the kids Bible. They have to do a good job of explaining They it. have to do a good yeah, job of simplifying it. Right. Here's we read we read this, try to read this to our kids. Um, every night, um, and it showed us some information about Daniel that I never knew. I'm like, what? The king also took several young men from the royal family and other fine families when they arrived in Babylon. The king ordered his chief officials to choose a few of the young men for a three-year training program. That's cool. The official chose D Daniel and three of his friends, giving them new Babylonian names. Daniel's new name was Belshazzar. These young men were to have a good life. They were to eat the same. So it's just giving you background. This is from a Bible, kids' Bible. Let's go to the next one. What about the picture of cartoon Bibles? Yes, cartoon heroes. This is cool. Bible trivia books. Why am I doing this? You probably ask. 
My passion is to help equip you. And to help you e help equip you so you can help equip somebody else. That's my heart. These are cool. Bible trivia. Go to the next one. And it just has questions. Um, see if you can answer some of these. Follow me and I will make you. <laughs> um, but blank found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Who? Noah. Yeah. I think it's Noah. Um, whatever for who, whatsoever a man soweth. Yeah. So these are like easier ones. So they they go they get into more difficult ones. And if you don't know it, guess what? Has to, what you have to do? You have to dig it out and find it. Go to the next one. Listen to the Bible. Okay, I'm going to show you this real quick. It's called the Word Promise. And this is one of my favorite things to, to listen to the Bible. All right. Here we go. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present you hear the music behind it? according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. doctrine, so you have to be careful. Next one. Write the Bible by hand. Do you know that? Write the Bible by hand. Go to the next slide. This is me writing out Ephesians. Go to the next slide. Do you know that's Next slide. you know that's scriptural? When he, when he, talking about the kings, when he takes the thrones, throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll, a copy of this law, taken from that of the priests who are Levites. It is to be with him and write it out. And he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words of this law and, and the, the decree, decrees and not consider himself better than his brothers and turn from the law. Write it out. One of the instructions for God's kings was to write it out. I wonder if they would have wrote it out they wouldn't have got in trouble. Next one. Affirmations. Just affirming God's word. Some people call them declarations. So here's a lie. I'm a victim. This is from a book. I'm a victim. Not good. Uh, nothing good ever happens to me. We need to replace the lie with God's truth. If God is for us, who can be against us? In all these things, we are more than conquerors. So, for the lie, find a scripture. <laughs> the devil's lying to you. Find a scripture to replace that lie. We have to replace it. Yep. Smaller books, like in the New Testament or some in the Old Testament, read it in, read it in one sitting because you'll get a better understanding of it. Just read it all the way through. Next one. Bible study groups. Have y'all heard that we had any Bible study groups here lately? Anywhere? We got the equip tonight. <laughs> we have the equip night. Next one. 
Check this out. The scripture, Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another through what? Discussion. Discussion. Mentor. Mentor. Sometimes, I believe we all in this room need to have a mentor. You know that? Mentor. <coughs> Regularly attend services. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. Everybody say encourage one another. <laughs> and all the more as you see the day approaching. As you see the day approaching. We need to continue in God's word. Next one. All right, I read, I read, I found this quote from a book. And it's talking about the importance of continuing. And this is from Oswald Chambers, <coughs> my utmost for his highest. This is a daily devotional. This is what he said. A great fear has been at work in my mind, and God has used it to arouse me to prayer. I came across a man whom I knew years ago, a mighty man of God, and now 10 years have gone, and I, I meet him again, uh, uh, Ber 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 yeah. yeah, that means you, you're talking a lot, but you have this, you're not saying much. <laughs> and unleavened means there's no life there. Yeah. How many men seem to become like that after 40 years of age? The fear of sloth and indulgence has come home with a huge fear and barely driven me to God to keep me from ever forgetting <laughs> what I owe him. What is this talking about? He saw a man that was on fire, went back 10 years later, this guy's saying a whole bunch of stuff, not saying much, and he's dead. We have to keep growing. We have to keep growing. <coughs> Next slide. Same with other more members. Yes. Let's pray. Father.